Welcome to the Adult Fans of Nerf Show. I'm Mr. K. And I'm Mr. S. And today, we're talking about Mattel's new line of blasters, Boomco. Boomco! That's right. We don't know a whole lot. The information kind of just came out, came, came down to us. Um, but it's pretty interesting, so we thought we'd give you guys a little bit of a heads up on it. Um, so, Mattel is no stranger to projectile launching foam fun stuff. They've done it before in numerous different license lines. Uh, but this is their first kind of, not direct competitor to Nerf, but another one of those things to kind of go alongside Nerf as a um, action play toy thing. Yep. Uh, the blog Fast Co Design recently uh, released a video going into a little bit more detail about the designs of these blasters that we're going to talk about today. Um, so the link will be uh, in the description of this video yeah. or on the blog post, whichever one you're viewing this from. Um, but uh, It's a cool video, check it out. It is a cool video. Yeah. It gives insight into what they were thinking when they designed them because um, with these blasters it's it's they're a little strange. They're, they're different in that they, they're kind of in the same family tree as a Nerf thing, but they're their own separate branch pretty much entirely. They have a lot of nifty gimmicky things to them that make them stand apart from your traditional Nerf fair. Absolutely. Um, let's start with the darts. Let's start with the darts. That's where I was just going to lead into. Um, very different take on a toy projectile. Um, they're, they're not foam. Um, the best thing from the images and stuff that I can akin them to is a, one of those giant pixie stick straws. Uh, it's plastic, kind of rigid, um, but it looks like it makes a good tube for a dart. Yep. Um, thanks to UK Nerf for a couple of pictures here. Um, they managed to get their hands on them from the first re retailer that's selling them seems to be a little bit early because they're supposed to come out uh, summer of this year but um, as you can see from the picture the the walls are quite thin yeah. and according to UK Nerf they only stick to the targets and this was reiterated in the video by Fast Co Design yeah. um, that they intentionally designed them to uh, be sticky but not sticky yeah, there, it seems to be a, a similar technology to those old, uh, you know, quarter machine sticky hand things, but instead of being able to stick to any kind of a textured surface via glass or whatever, this, this sticky stuff on the head of the dart um, will only stick to their treated um, target stuff things. So there are, there are shields that are incorporated on almost every blaster. The uh, bandolier has a shield thing on it and they also have a plethora of different sh um, like stick to the wall target options that uh, the darts will stick to as well. Yep. Um, the targets look like they're some kind of um, like almost like post-it note stick yeah, some stuff. Yeah, some kind but, something like um, a mix of that between Post-it note and a window plane. Yep. So you can unstick it, restick it. Yep. Um, in the videos that we've seen, they've stuck it to people, yep. to things, walls, whatever. But um, as uh, UK Nerf has tested, they apparently don't stick to clothes, windows, um, or you know various other surfaces that one would almost expect them to stick to. Right. This the standard fare. If you're inside playing around with your blasters, you're going to shoot at the windows. You're going to shoot at the walls. You're going to shoot at your ceilings picture frames, stuff like that, eh, it doesn't stick to any of that yet, that we know of. Nope, but um, they stick to the targets very well. Um, in an, Again, the video uh, by Fast Code Design, it shows them trying to peel off the darts from the target, and they, they stick quite well. They, they stretch a little bit before they, they actually come off. It makes me want, want to like get my hands on the darts and actually feel how squishy, how kind of tacky the head of the dart really is. Because, yeah, he unless he was pulling really, really, really slowly, it looked like there was a fair amount of resistance stretching on that uh, head to make it come off of the target. Absolutely. And um, also, again, from uh, UK Nerf, they noted that these darts don't like to be stepped on. 
And you can kind of maybe think that's a duh from one of them being made of plastic instead of foam to the walls of the darts being very thin. Um, if you're playing that, see, it's, and it's because of the collapsibility of the darts and them not wanting to reform, probably cracking, breaking, um, that you might want to think twice about bringing these to an actual Nerf war. Yep. Uh, they, apparently, these blasters do get anywhere from 30 to 70 feet. Um, and they, it appears as though none of them are compatible with uh, Nerf darts or any other kind mm -hmm. of normal foam dart right. because they're made to work with such a thin-walled dart. Yep, and that's, that's not a bad thing. It keeps them specializing in their own, um, their own facet, their own way. Mm -hmm. uh, in, instead of, okay, how are we going to make this uh, so it'll fire every kind of dart that's out there. No, we're only going to focus on our specific ammo and make that work the best we can. Yep, and it was noted in the video by Fastco Design that uh, they aren't necessarily trying to compete with Nerf because I'm sure they realize that competing with Nerf doesn't work very well for very many companies. So they're really just trying to create a toy that bolsters the whole market for analog toys. Let's keep people playing physically and less of just the sitting around with our thumbs twiddling in the air. Yep. And, uh, uh, but they will be launching a uh, kind of a, a phone cradle type tactical rail attachment for their blasters. And that's all we know. That's all we know about that. We've um, seen a picture of an app cradle looking thing. We don't know anything else besides that. Yep. Looks pretty much the same as... Um, Nerf's offering. Yeah, it looks very looks, similar to Nerf's yeah. app cradle. So, um, let's get on blasters. Yeah, the blasters are pretty cool. Um, they're all like red, blue, white color scheme uh, with some grays and blacks and stuff in there, which looks pretty cool. Um, I don't mind the look of the blasters so far aesthetically as a whole. Um, should we they're, start with the smallest and work up? Yeah, I think so. I think that's a fair way to go. Okay. Uh, so I guess the first smallest one that we know of right now is called the Clip Fire. Um, has a carabiner on the back. Looks to be like secret shot jolt size. Um, has dart, dart storage on the top where it could have been a sight, but they put a dart hole thing in there. Um, is there other is, is there other dart storage on there besides the one? Uh, no, no. There's no. Um, as you can see in the picture, the handle collapses into the actual body of the blaster itself to allow for you to store it a little bit better. And um, there's a button on the back that allows you to collapse it. And so it's, it's secure when it opens. And you can use the clip on the back to secure it to a backpack or a belt loop or, or, or something. What, what, what have you. The whole collapsing handle thing I like. Um, it's a cool little niche thing. Uh, makes the blaster a little bit less of a unicasker. Yeah, yeah. Um, the there is actually a smaller one. Um, we can't. We don't have a picture that we can show of it, but it's called the Smart Shot. It's a. It's more of a linear blaster. It doesn't look like it has a trigger like the Clip Shot does. The Smart Shot is just like a one shot kind of little pea shooter type thing. It looks like a tactical rail accessory. It really just does. It looks like something that you can throw on a tactical rail, push a button, shoot a dart. Yep. It, I mean, but it, in the picture, it doesn't even look like it has a trigger or anything. It looks like it's just pull, let go. Yep. So a very simple blaster. And it looks like all of the blasters, at least the clip fire and the smart shot, smart shot, right? Uh, look like they come with, those smaller blasters come with one of those adhesive uh, peel and stick Target. So so far as we know, every single one comes with a target. They're also going to sell separate target packs as well. And uh, we've seen some pictures of what appears to be a print-your-own target kit. Which could be cool. Which, yeah, definitely could be cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's no reason why they... Or, why they wouldn't include the targets because they don't stick to anything. Else. Right, exactly. It's kind of a no. It's kind of a no, no brainer. We have these projectiles that are going to stick only on the targets. And we'll give everybody one with them. If they want more, we'll offer the you know the print and customize whatever. 
um, booster packs of them, basically. Um, and if all it is is treated paper, uh, it should go through an inkjet printer pretty easily. One would think. Um, okay, so the next uh, blaster in the lineup is the Far Shot. Far Shot. The Far Shot is the first of these blasters, size-wise, to have an integrator, a, a, a tactical rail mounted um, kind of blast shield target. So that was that, that that was a question that I had that I forgot to to address beforehand. These these shields are they fully integrated or can you remove them? They are all removable they are except all removable. where well, um, I think any that has a shield has one shield that's removable. I well. I think there is one blaster that does have um, a shield that's not removable. It's really hard to tell because for some of these we only have one picture and the, the shield appears to be closed. So we can't quite tell whether it's actually something that opens up to reveal uh, the sticky paper stuff. Yeah, there is but, a bit of ambiguity, but on all of these mid to large size blasters there is some sort of either pop out or fold out shielding on the blaster, which gives you more surface area to really shoot at because it has that treated sticky stuff that makes the darts work. Yep. Um, in the pictures for that um, UK Nerf posted, one of the things we noticed about the far shot first is that it's small. It, it looks really tiny in a, like an average person's hand. So we're thinking it, it, it seems to be about the size of a fire strike maybe a little bit smaller. It irks me a little bit because this one looked like it was going to be at very least uh, scout size. Yeah. Possibly up to like strong arm size. But after seeing people play with it and whatnot, it is small. It is, um, the handle looks almost half the size of what it looks like in the picture. Yeah, yeah. And um, with this blaster, it primes via the slide mechanism on the top yeah. and the shield from what we understand is not a push button pop-up shield like the larger blasters have, but it is a removable shield on the tactical rail that does fold out. Yeah. So with this one, um, this kit has storage in the handle for two extra darts, nothing in the front, so that's all the storage you get is the two in the, in the uh, handle. It has a top-mounted tactical rail on the slide mechanism, um, so if the bottom shield thing is tactical rail mounted, that would give it two tactical rails total. Yep. Um, it, it does indeed look like both the top and bottom have a tactical rail. Um, these tactical rails look to be a little different from Nerf's offering. They seem to have a lot of like uh, kind of slots down, down them, which could hinder putting any other kind of tactical rail accessory that's not intended for them on them. To be determined, though. Yep. Um, the next blaster, the next size up, is the Twisted Spinner. Ah, the Twisted Spinner. This one looks interesting. It is very interesting. From what, I, from what we've seen, it looks as though this, or this blaster does not have a trigger. It fires via like a ratchet type thing that ratchets back and forth. Yep. So what, is it a, um, it's a eight round carousel? Yep, eight rounds. Eight round carousel. And, and what it looks like happens is when you pull it forward, push it back, it fires the dart from the top, and then when you pull it out again, it spins, and then it looks like it fires what was on the bottom. Yeah, it, it, the top. it so has it an alternates? interesting it has an interesting uh, mechanism, which I we're gonna have to wait to see it in action to really get a good view of it. Um, yeah. In the videos that we've seen, it's kind of hard to tell how it works exactly. Kind of hard though. But it apparently spins like almost 360 degrees or thereabouts to get the next dart, which means that it might fire, dry fire at some point that before was my, it's empty. Right, that, that, that was my thought about it too, because if it, if it alternates or if it just spins freely and grabs a cylinder, it could dry fire. It could, which uh, I, maybe they're not worried about that. Maybe they're not worried about it, um, but it'll be interesting once we get our hands on these sometime this okay. summer. Um, this, um, the Twisted Spinner is the first size that has the 
button. Push button uh, shield deployment. Yep. And this and one, th th this is one of the bigger shields that I've seen on there too. This one looks more like, like, like you were saying, like a Dilophosaurus. Yep. Shield pops out and we're ready for action. Yep, and this one is tactical rail mounted. Yep. So you can pull it off, put it on another one. Um, the, the thing about these uh, tactical rail shields is that it looks like they're designed to fit in a certain position on the tactical rail. So you can't put it all the way on and expect it to close all the way. No. And that's um, what makes me wonder how well they're going to work on other blasters as well. Because you, if you take a look at the picture here of the twisted spinner, that shield, the gray part, butts right up against that red part of the actual housing. So, I mean, you can't put that any farther back on the tactical rail and make it work. Um, so if that's, how formed is that to the shell of the twisted spinner, and how well is that going to make that shield work on other blasters? Yep, yep. It's really something we're going to have to wait to get our hands on these. Um, when we do get our hands on these, we will most definitely give a full review of all of them. Um, it's always interesting to see how companies that don't typically make blasters or companies that are making their first blaster, you know, what kind of things they do differently than uh, previously established lines. Yep, exactly. It's, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a testing out period, seeing how these concepts are going to work, and so far I'm kind of liking the overall appeal of these. When that shield is out on the Twisted Spinner, that thing looks really cool. It does, it does. Um, the next blaster in the lineup is called the Stealth Ambush. Again, with this one we don't have a picture of it that we can show. Um, but it is the first uh, clip blaster size-wise. It has an eight-round clip, yep. and the clip works somewhat like some of the Busby clips, whereas it's a, it's a staggered clip um, that kind of just slides through a mechanism, yep. much like the Mag, Mag Strike. Strike. Yep, that's what I was just going to say. And it looks like it goes, like the clip from one of them that we saw, was it this one in the in the video that I mean the clip was just going through that thing? Uh, no, that one's one of the larger ones. That okay. We'll get to a little bit later. Okay. But uh, with the stealth ambush, it's it looks like it's it's uh, it's got a stationary front handle and the back handle actually moves back and forth so in order to fire it. A, a counterintuitive pump action. Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, again, this one doesn't look like it has a trigger, so that. Um, that action. action on the rear handle is going to prime, fire, or advance the clip, the whole kit and complete one Yep. Um, this one does come with one of the push button uh, folding or unfolding uh, shields. And it looks like it might have a manual fold out one in the back. It does. The gray it part, does. I mean, there, there's a gray part on the back of the blaster that looks like it might deploy out, but we're not. It, it, do, it definitely doesn't look like it has a button, but. It, and it also looks like it's non-removable, if it, indeed it is a shield. Right. It might not be. It might just be a piece of flashing on the outer housing of the blaster. But. Yep. So, okay, that's the stealth ambush. The next one, or well, there's actually another smaller one that we missed called the whip blast. The whip blast. This one is really, really interesting to me. In the in the video, um, the um, fast code design. Fast video. Fa fast code design video. Um, this was one that they they did the, the, the Terminator 2 scene of it coming out of the plastic resin for the prototyping scene. Um, it's an interesting priming mechanism. The whole the whole like red part of the blaster, the firing part, or the uh, meat and potatoes of it basically is on a circle that kind of surrounds the handle, and it looks like. You grab the blaster and you move it down along the ratchet, along the handle, so like the handle rotates, and yep. then you put that back up and that's supposed to prime it, and then it has a trigger for firing. You know, and with, with the name, I would kind of expect you to be able to grab it and just go Right, and who knows, it, that may be how it's intended to go, but for a slow motion thing that yeah, yep. explains and how, the, how the action should work. Yeah, um, this one comes with a tactical rail on it, but it does not have a tactical rail mounted shield. It appears as though it has a fold out shield more towards the back. And it yeah. looks like and, uh, it's, it's probably going to be one on each side manual fold out. Just you know, a couple of little things that fold out. Yep. It has th uh, storage in the front for three darts. Plus um, the barrel. Plus the barrel, so you can have four darts ready in there total. I can count. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I didn't really notice it before, but I got to say, the most interesting thing about these blasters 
no blaze orange tips. Interesting, yes, I did not notice that. Uh, they're, they're kind of a powder blue tip on most of them, kind of a bluish color. They don't have any, any blaze orange on them at all. Huh, I'm, yeah, I did not notice that. It's the that first before. time I noticed that because I was looking at the, I was looking at the, the, the picture that we can't show of the whip blast, which you can find um, on Buff Daddy Nerf's website. Um, he found them. I'm not sure where he found them, but he found them. Um, but it has it has a blue barrel, and it doesn't have any a uh, uh, an orange tip. It doesn't have any kind of like colored tip like that. I just find, I find that fascinating because I was under the assumption that it had to be orange. Maybe it doesn't have to be orange. Maybe no, well, it just has see, to be the non-realistic. See the thing. The thing is, I actually looked at the laws. And as far as the laws are concerned, it looks like it has to be an orange tip. Because I was, I was questioning to myself whether it actually had to be an orange tip or it could be just a really light colored tip or like a, like a um, unnaturally colored tip. I have no idea. But One thing that I would like to say that I just noticed in this picture about the whip blast, the whip blast is that it looks like it has a little trigger underneath here, which I'm thinking may unlock the stuff on the slide to yes. make it whip. It, it may unlock it or it may deploy the shield. Oh, it could do that as well. There, it, that as there's well. a secondary trigger underneath the first trigger. Kind of like the flywheel trigger on a Nerf blaster. Yep. yep. So that could do either of those things. But yeah, an, another interesting thing that we noticed about these blasters. Um, anyway, the final blaster in the lineup, and if I can find the picture on my tablet, where are you? So pictures. It, it, some of these names are kind of weird. Um, the biggest, the biggest guy, the biggest contender is called the Rapid Madness. The Rapid Madness. That's right. And I didn't get. Yes, that thing looks pretty cool. It has. This has the biggest clip of their linear clip stuff. I don't know how many rounds. It looks like that. twenty rounds. Twenty round clip. It's pretty cool. Again, it it goes on the side and it goes through that way. This guy is kind of, the. this is the weirdest looking one of the bunch. Yep, it looks like, uh, I'm going to say that the, it's probably an air bladder blaster. It probably got an air bladder in there because it's got a big pump on the front. Yep. I would say it looks like none of these blasters are battery powered at all. No, and that's, that's okay. I'm fine with that. Um, and that from the fan co? Fast code design. Fast code design video. Haha. -ha. Um, when they fired this one, it looked like the clip just went broom through like a mag strike. So if this is air bladder powered, um, it could just be you know you pump it up, hold down the trigger, and let her fly. Yep, pretty much. And uh, again, this one has the button powered or the button activated flip out shield on the front. Yeah. Um, it looks like it's tactical rail mounted. Looks like it's tactical rail mounted. It's yeah. kind of hard to see in this picture, but you. you if the glass go, is this big, I would say that it's probably definitely... I'm going to uh, go out on a limb and say that from the way it looks, all of the button push uh, shield deploy things are tactical rail mounted and therefore removable. Yep, yep. So, um, depending on what the whip blast is like, it could that could be the only one that's deployable but not removable. But not removable. So. No, no. But, um, yeah, this one... This one looks very reminiscent of a stampede, to be honest. From just the girth of it. Yeah, really. and, and the back end is just kind of bulky, and it, yeah, I don't know. It's probably going to be a back-heavy beast of a thing, um, but it's clip-fed, and it could be really cool. Yeah, um, definitely. And they will be selling extra clips. Yes. In addition to other accessories they're going er, that they're going to sell, they're going to sell goggles, they're going to sell... Uh, like we said, mentioned before, extra targets. Yeah. They're going to be selling clips. the app cradle. Yeah. I mentioned the clips already. You did mention the clips already? Yeah. And uh, what they're calling a two-in-one bandolier that has a kind of a, a targety spot here, storage for some darts, 
and storage for one of the clips and a small blaster. That part pretty, look, looks pretty cool to me. It, it appears to be almost a um, over and under tactical rail. It's like the top part is a little wider, big enough to sh shove one of the clips in, and the bottom part looks like just a, one of their regular tactical rail mounts that you can slide uh, a top mounted tactical rail on there for one of the smaller blasters, ideally. Absolutely. Um, another one of the accessories that they're going to have, and I think it's one of the, it's a very interesting accessory. They're going to have some, like a sticky ball, like grenade type thing. Yeah, um, again, these were in the video. These um, were in the video uh, by Fastco Design. Um, they're just little, like, kind of, they're basically gel made, ge they're, they're gel balls that are made of the same material as the tip of the darts. Yep. And um, it looks like they're going to sell a pack of them. Um, and I think they're also going to sell them with some other sets with like goggles and targets and stuff. Um, they, they definitely look interesting and I'm, I'm curious about them as much as I'm curious about the darts. I'm curious more than anything about how big they are. Are we talking like, like I'm gonna you know, say Bakugan size or are they I'm going to say golf ball -ish. Golf ball size? Somewhere between a golf ball and, I'm trying to think of a ball between a golf ball and like a baseball. Maybe a racquetball ball. Maybe hand hand handball. Handball, yeah. So, yeah, that's that's uh, Mattel's newest offering with Boomco. Um, we're oh, excited about them. Yeah, They're very interesting. Even though even though the darts are kind of not necessarily what we expected initially, um, they are an interesting offering, an interesting foray, and. Um, one of the biggest things about them is that they're not intended to be disposable. And that's really, I think, one of the things that, that we like about new ammo types and new blasters. Well, let's, let's, let, let's face it, we've been seeing a lot of disposable ammo type blasters come out recently, but the Exploders and um, Tech Recon and... No, well, Tech Recon's, oh, come not, on. Tech Recon's not disposable, it's, it's extremely losable. <laughs> yes, just, just, just because of the size. I know it's not intended to be disposable ammo, but for the size, I mean, you're never going to find them all. You're not. No, it was um, weeks after we played with them that... Uh, you were still finding them all over the place, I'm right? sure there's still some in the bunker somewhere, just <laughs> scattered around behind things. But Mattel is, is like, has always been in my mind the, like, the number two company toy-wise in the world. They're actually the number one company. They, they've, they've surpassed Hasbro? They've been higher than Hasbro for years and years. It's, it's, it's surprising the, the thing. The thing is, is they sell Barbies and Hot Wheels, and those <laughs> are like the biggest toys around because they're, first of all, you know, every girl, some boys have no. dolls in, in, in Barbies and, you know, there's tons and tons of Hot Wheels, of course, and they own Matchbox too, so they got the whole toy car market. Yeah. And they, they also license various things, um, DC. They have DC. And uh, actually the, the uh, Batman Grapnel Blaster was the last one of the dark blasters that they made that I remember. I, I believe it was. I don't think they've had any, any new dark blasters come out since Batman. Nope. Um, I don't think they had anything for Superman dark blasters. No, they, they had some kind of like... They had like the stretchy, flingy things. The stretchy, things flingy things and, and then the hard disc blaster. Yeah. Which is just shit. That, yeah. But no, it's... You're, you're, you're right, and I'll, com I'll complete this rant by saying interest in Transformers and comic books and stuff ebbs and flows, but Barbies and Hot Wheels will be good forever. Yep, yep, and, and you know, to be honest, before we heard about these boom pole blasters, we haven't really been interested in anything Mattel has done. No. Um, for the most part, they just do toys that we, us specifically, aren't interested in, because we're interested in in blasters and Nerf is the biggest brand in there. We're interested in Transformers and Hasbro is the biggest uh, company that makes transformable robots. I mean, everybody else is shit. They've bought up almost everybody else that made them. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but you know, besides that, really, our interest in toys isn't isn't too much beyond that. And it's not to say that we're that we're brand horrors or anything. It just happens to be that everything we like is made by Hasbro. Yeah. If if Mattel had Marvel stuff, I'd be more interested in the stuff that Mattel. Absolutely, makes. absolutely. But it just happens to be the way that it is. But 
the blast the boom co stuff looks really cool i can't wait to get my hands on them it's going to be fun uh, i like a lot of these kitschy deployable transforming things so this this line of blasters could be just right up my alley absolutely and the to be honest um they look to be about the same build quality as nerf blasters they are very and you know it's you know if mattel is the mogul that, are, that they say it is, I'm not saying that they're not, they are, um, then why shouldn't they make quality plastic products? So I would expect these things to feel very much like a Nerf Hasbro toy blaster, less like a um, Busby or other brand. You know, more, more quality, less thin. Absolutely. Except for the walls of the darts. <laughs> That's it. That's all that's thin around here. Keep blasting. Oh. <laughs> well, this episode wasn't about Nerf. It wasn't about Nerf. No, it was about Mattel. Join us next time, and stay tuned to our website for more information as we get it about Boom Co. Blasters.